Welcome everyone to the first and only sports gambling game show in the world. I'm your host, Sean stacking the money green. And tonight on let it ride two D gens go head to head to prove who is the big action capper and who is Lamar Jackson's crapper. It's time to welcome on <laughs> our newest odds on favorite last week. He was the underage underdog who upset let it rides longest running champion, Adam Pelletier. He's the voice of the about that action podcast on the sports gambling network. Give it up for the millennial moneymaker, Kyle Watnell. Kyle, you played it safe last week with your bankroll and it paid off. Uh, any plans to uh, sack up this uh, today? <laughs> I will say, Sean, I, I did get some stick uh, for for keeping some of the units in my bankroll <laughs> last week. Uh, but I gotta say, uh, bankroll management—something we learn, uh, something that I'm gonna stick with this week if I have the opportunity, uh, based on the trivia, to to bank some of that money and uh, make Nick here come back from behind. That's something I'll do. Like you said, no one wants to, you know, no one wants the uh, new kid on the block. Uh, but I'm gonna do it again. I'm, I'm I'm here to stay as the underdog, and eventually people will give me the respect. So I'll work my way there. He's 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 winning it one bet at a time. And now for this week's challenger, you can hear him on the College Experience podcast and read him over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com. He's the closer from Carolina. Give it up for the Dantabase 2.0. Nick Dant, Nick, your brother, the Dantabase 1.0 was on our first episode and lost. How difficult has it been for your family living with that shame? Well, he's been a disappointment for most of our lives, so we're kind of used to it. <laughs> All right, so par for the course from the database. Database 2.0, new improved model, a veteran. We'll see if that pays off. All right, guys, what do we got? Well, we're going to kick things off, do a quick review of the game in round one. I'm going to test their sports gambling knowledge with some trivia questions in round two. We look at how many units each, each contestant won. Uh, with their lock dog and tease from last weekend's action. And in the final round, they'll give us their best bets for this weekend. Whoever has the most units come Monday uh, wins and returns next week to face the next challenger on round one questions are worth 10 units. Kyle, you're the defendant champion. So you're going to start first. This category is spread them. You started at SGPN as an intern and have risen to stardom. Well, I didn't I didn't write this script, but <laughs> <laughs> almost there. Roger Goodell is another famous intern who worked his way up the ranks at the NFL to, to become commissioner in 2006 during his 15-year tenure. Which team has the best overall record against the spread? Is it the New England Patriots, the Green Bay Packers, the Indianapolis Colts, or the Kansas City Chiefs? Best against the spread record since 2006. Hmm. I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers. Oh, and for Kyle, you overthought it probably there. You know? It, yeah. It's right in front of you, the New England Patriots. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's maybe that's why a deflate gate happened. Perhaps uh, Goodell sitting on a Indy plus three and a half ticket in the 2014 championship. We've been there, Goodell. Hey, to, to, we know how it goes. Fair, I, I, I was a kid, so my brain was still in the <laughs> developmental stages. You, you got to give me a little bit of slack for that. Yes, 2006 <laughs> was a uh, was a very young uh, Kyle Watnell. All right, Nick, you're up. This category is famous shits. That's right. After leaving this week's Monday night football game due to cramps, uh, Lamar Jackson returned late in the fourth quarter to cover the three and a half point spread over the Browns aptly named Browns. Of course, ironically, Paul Pierce did the exact same thing in 2008. Of course he claims it was an injury, but uh, he returned and he also covered a three and a half point spread, which team was he playing against? Is it the A, Los Angeles Lakers, B, Philadelphia 76ers, or C, Cleveland Cavaliers, or D, San Antonio Spurs? Who was Paul Pierce playing when he needed to shit so bad he got into a wheelchair? <laughs> was it the Lakers, Sixers, Cavaliers, or San Antonio Spurs? I'm not going to overthink it. I'm going to go Lakers. That yeah. you are correct. Ten points to Nick, aka Dantabase 2.0. Oh, 
Oh man. And uh, yeah, Lakers ended up winning. That was game one of the 2008 NBA finals. They ended up, uh, you know, Celtics went on to win the title. So maybe, maybe there's some value in the Ravens plus 50 or plus 1500 <laughs> right now. Maybe there's, maybe there's some crap logic there. All right, Kyle, you're up next. The category is sharp speak. No professional gambler would bet at a sports book that has a higher VIG than a 1%, B 5%, C 10% or D 20%. What is the, uh, what is the line you don't want to go over as far as standard VIG? Is it 1%, 5%, 10% mm. or 20%? I like the question. Doesn't mean I know the answer to it. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go five percent. Oh, ten oh. percent is the standard oh, vig. That's why they call it the dime line. And yep. uh, you know, hey, this is this is it's a learning opportunity here on Let It Ride. Right. Taking it, taking it one question at a time. Okay, Kyle. Though sound, it means it's time to double down with a question worth twenty points. <laughs> Despite okay. the NBA's issues uh, with China last season, the Chinese they love themselves some basketball and, and have their own nicknames for the NBA players. Who earned the Chinese nickname "Fucks the Sky"? Is it A. Steph Curry, B. LeBron James, C. Kevin Durant, or D. Eric Gordon? Which NBA player? His Chinese mm. nickname, loosely translated to "Fucks the Sky." Steph Curry, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, or Eric Gordon? I'm going to go with the very tall Kevin Durant. Oh, incorrect. Ooh. Steph Curry. Oh he's the guy oh, that. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, he's the guy. You know, long ball, fucks the sky. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how the math works out. Apparently, some sort of pun on his uh, Chinese name. Little known <laughs> fact, though, there's the, the, uh, the other nicknames, pretty fun. LeBron is known as little emperor uh, because he's spoiled royalty. So all the LeBron haters love that nickname. I'm sure uh, Durant is school bag do uh, because he wears backpacks and uh, Eric Gordon is round faced Mamba <laughs> because his face is round. So <laughs> I think you would think you still have to play like Mamba to get that name, but Hey, who am I? Who am I to uh, judge these uh, Chinese nicknames? Nick, going over to you. Your final category is Back to the Futures. Which current top twenty-five college basketball team came into the season as three hundred to one long shots to win the NCAA championship? Is it A. San Diego State, B. Clemson, C. Missouri, or D. Rutgers? Currently, top twenty-five college basketball program came into the season. At an astonishing three hundred to one long shots. Who do you got? I'm gonna go Rutgers. Incorrect. Oh, it's. It turns out it's Mizzou. Ah, yeah. I like it though. I mean, they're in the top twenty-five. Three hundred to one sounds like DJ's only prop bet if I've ever heard one. <laughs> you know that sound though. Time to double down with a question worth twenty points, Nick. You're hardcore for North Carolina, and uh, North Carolina really hardcore for college hoops. They have 18 D1 teams in the state. Which one of those mascots is not connected to a D1 basketball team in North Carolina? Is it the Fighting Camels, the Running Bulldogs, the Phoenix, or the Battling Bishops? Which one of these mascots? Is not connected to a North Carolina D1 basketball team. It's either Bulldogs or Bishops. I'm going to go Bulldogs. Oh, so close. You had, you had, you were, your logic was sound. The answer is the battling Bishops. Who's the Bulldogs? What's up? Who's the Bulldogs? The Bulldogs are the Gardner Webb running Bulldogs. How could you uh, forget that? Dantabase yeah. 1.0 will be disappointed when he hears this. We got the North Carolina uh, Wesleyan Battling Bishops. They're actually a D3 school. And then you have the Campbell uh, Fighting Camels. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. the Elon uh, Phoenix. They're all the uh, D1. So 
Let's take a look at the round one leaderboard. Not much of a shootout here. Hopefully, everyone took the under at home. We have Nick with ten <laughs> points, Kyle with zero points. Okay, now we're going to take a look at uh, what they did last weekend with their picks. Kyle, what was your luck dog tease from last weekend? So I ended up taking uh, Arsenal on the money line as my lock, uh, the English Premier League team. Uh, they're a bit of a dumpster fire, usually a big team uh, that gets a lot of respect. But I thought I could take an opportunity grabbing them at minus 188. Didn't work out, and they even lost today as well. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and it was just a nightmare scenario. So my, my lock lost with Arsenal. My dog was uh, a UFC fighter named Renato Moicano, a grappler who decided to uh, try to exchange punches with a puncher. Uh, he got knocked out uh, as his, <laughs> as the dog there, but luckily my teaser hit. Uh, so I'm, I was one for three over the weekend. I took the Green Bay Packers minus two uh, and the Seattle Seahawks minus seven and a half. Just a simple six point two team teaser. Uh, so that's the one that paid out. And then of course, with the money I left over in the bank that everyone was giving me some shit for, <laughs> that paid out as well. So that's why I'm back. Yep. Play Kyle, keeping it safe. What? No, uh, plugging away <laughs> here. I don't. Why did you not take Burnley plus four eighty six? I was. I have I no know. idea. I have no idea who they are or what that's referring to. <laughs> but uh, that's what that's what you get for betting on soccer. Yeah, you lost the MMA dog. But again, keeping it safe with the two team teaser. So you took that fifteen, turned it into now twenty eight units. Uh, add that to the zero units you have from the previous round, and you're sitting at twenty eight units. Nick, let's go over to you. Uh, how did your lock dog and tease fare over the uh, weekend? Not bad. My lock was, of course, the Baltimore Ravens. Oh, never, in, never in <laughs> doubt. <laughs> Cash that I one. Know, uh, yep. No. No. No worries. I knew that was going to hit. You know, the whole game. <laughs> uh, my dog was Rutgers basketball plus three against Maryland on Monday night. They won by twelve or fourteen. So that hit. And uh, my tease, McKee said I could give him shit because he didn't notify me of this until Monday, so I couldn't do a football tease. I had to do a college basketball tease, which I advise against. <laughs> and my tease did not hit, so two out of three. Well, hey, that's not bad. So you, now you're sitting on 71 units. Add, you know, add that on to your uh, round one score of 10 units, sitting at a whopping 81 units. Okay, now now's the time you can uh, score a couple extra units to defend your bad beat. Whoever gives the most convincing excuse of why your losing pick wasn't your fault, you get a extra ten units. But of course, you only have fifteen seconds on the clock. Kyle, not a great weekend for the picks, but we've all been there. Yeah, take your pick. Which pick do you want to defend and uh, have at it? Well, it, it just has to be, it has to be Arsenal. So much change needs to come to Arsenal. <laughs> I, I thought it was a good chance to take a team that uh, has a lot of respect, has a lot of money, more importantly, uh, taking on a team that they they should weigh out class. But I made a mistake. I tried to back them. They're a dumpster fire. Never will I bet Arsenal again for the rest of the season. That's how much I feel bad about that pick this weekend. Time is up. Convincing, uh, pretty convincing there. Nick, can you beat that? You, of course, threw out a college basketball teaser because our uh, writer and producer, Ryan McKee, put you into a corner. Maybe you're going to use that, but uh, <laughs> you're on the clock. Defend your shitty pick here. So, who the hell takes college basketball teasers? <laughs> All right. It's like a four point swing. That could be like free throws in the last 10 seconds. Nobody takes college basketball teasers. I said, I alluded to it. I advise against it. <laughs> of course, I didn't win it. Okay, very, very succinct and a very good excuse. However, I'm going to give the 10 points to Kyle because Kyle cool. learned his lesson and he said he's not going to bet on soccer for the rest of the season. That's all I heard. And that's all <laughs> I want to hear from young people is to avoid betting <laughs> soccer and only bet real football. USA, USA. <laughs> Taking a look at the leaderboard, Nick, aka Dantabase 2.0, with an astonishing lead right now, 81 points. Although Kyle still hanging around here with 38 units. And this is where it all comes down. We decide where the guys are going to let their units lay, or where they're going to put their units, and where they're going to. With their picks this weekend or again, Kyle, I don't think you can play it safe this time around. Right. You're, you're right. You're chasing points, aka units. You have 38 units. What are you gonna do with them this weekend? Okay, 38 units. Um, 
let's take 15 of those units and we're going to put it on a dog that I'm, that I'm pretty excited about heading into the weekend. Okay. Uh, we're going back to UFC. I know my dog didn't hit last week, but <laughs> this weekend, this weekend, I'm going to take another UFC dog and a guy named chaos Williams. We can get a, we can get behind a name like oh, that. Yeah. Uh, he takes on Michelle Pereira, um, plus one Oh five dog, uh, just a slight dog. But uh, Pereira is just a guy I don't have as much respect for. He gasses out in fights. And Chaos Williams is a guy on the come up with a ton of knockout power. 15 units on Chaos Williams. I'll also take 15 units on my tees. Uh, It's kind of a tease I took from about that action this past week. Um, I'm going to take the Washington football team plus 11 and a half Mm. versus the Seahawks. And I'm going to take the New England Patriots plus eight against the Miami Dolphins. I'm going to keep it simple, just like I did last week. Uh, the tease came through for me big time. So I'm going to take a, the six six point teaser, um, nice and easy with those two teams. And then lastly, with my eight units that don't really matter too much, I am <laughs> going to go back to soccer. I'm not going to bet on Arsenal again, but I will keep betting soccer all year long. Uh, I'm going to take Liverpool, hence the jersey. I thought I'd bring it out uh, for my team. I'm going to take Liverpool minus 204 as a favorite versus Crystal Palace. Um, they, uh, they had a great game today against Tottenham. They snagged a late winner. They're in great form. They're top of the table. They should get the job done. All right. Well, worse of luck with the soccer betting, but uh, <laughs> I think I, I can back the idea of betting on chaos and it could be chaos. If Nick Dant doesn't hold on to this lead sitting at 81 units, big slate this weekend with college football, college basketball. We got the Canelo fight. Nick, I know you dabbled in a little bit of everything gambling wise. What do you got going uh, as far as spending your 81 units? You know, let's just do college basketball here. I'm in North Carolina. This is college basketball country. So let's split that up equally. Can we divide that by four, whatever that is? Yeah. We'll just do a 20. Yeah. Sounds good. (laughs) Tip one to the dealer. (laughs) There you go. I like it. So give me the San Francisco Dons plus eight at Oregon tomorrow. Okay. Give me. the uh, hang on one second. Where'd this go? Give me Texas Tech minus a point and a half at home against Kansas. Oh. Give me Long Island laying three against Sacred Heart. Oh, okay. And where was my last one here? Give me Loyola Marymount laying three and a half against UC Irvine. Okay, sticking it to the anteaters. I like it, and it's a good way for uh, people to learn that I know the UCI, uh, UCI mascot, the anteaters. All right, should be a fun weekend of picks. Stay tuned uh, at Gambling Podcast. We're going to be announcing the winner. See how things shake out, and that'll do it for Let It Ride. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. The audio version is on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network feed, which also features about that action hosted by Kyle and make sure you check out the college experience where you can hear NC Nick, AKA the Danta base 2.0 for let it ride. This is Sean green reminding you to help control the betting public. Have your DJ spayed and neutered.